Welcome to a new episode of The Startup Show. Today we're here at the Start Summit and I have the big pleasure to introduce you to Paolo, who is a co-founder of cofoundme.org. Right, welcome to the show. Welcome back to a new episode of The Startup Show. Today we're here at the Start Summit, one of the biggest student-organized startup conferences in the world. And I have the big pleasure to introduce you to Paolo, who himself has some kind of project, company, startup, we'll figure out in a second. But give us a little bit about the uh, background of who Paolo is. All right, great. Thank you very much. <laughs> sure. Great opportunity. Basically, my name is Paolo Ferretti. I'm a 22-year-old student. I started you know, my first startup in my first year of university called Drive for Less. It was a platform that matched driving students and drive monitors together to make the driving license cheaper. And then I had the opportunity to join CoFoundMe. The guys from CoFoundMe really liked what I did at, back at uh, Drive for Less. And now, basically, I'm responsible for user growth and partner acquisition at CoFoundMe. Tell me what fascinates you about, let's say, the whole idea of like startups and entrepreneurship. I think it's the idea, you know, to break the rules, to be part of this really great movement. I joined, you know, this idea of being an entrepreneur. You know, a lot of people were talking about Internet of Things, stuff like that. And what I really saw was the democratization of things. And I wanted to be part of that. You know, Uber is about that. Airbnb is about that. Making, you know, transportation accessible, hosting accessible. And then, you know, CoFoundMe came and it's the idea to make the whole startup world accessible for everyone. We are at the university, which is very business oriented. Absolutely. Yeah. So maybe you can tell us a little bit like what your personal thoughts, so there's no yeah. right and wrong, no, no, about like why, for example, you will prefer to work in a startup versus corporate. Absolutely, but that's a tricky one, right? Um, <laughs> well, please don't hold that against me. Uh, no, uh, basically, you know, it, it was very clear from the very beginning, you know, that I didn't want to go for that typical bricks and mortar kind of company. I wanted a lean approach. I'm, a, I'm a kind of a self-taught guy, and I really like the idea, you know, of being able to move fast forward. You know, not to be stuck with hierarchies, with people telling me what to do or not to do. I'm all about learning, I'm all about experience, you know, and I thought the best way to actually get this practical experience, to get, you know, real knowledge and really get interactive, you know, really interact with the actual economy that is out there, you know, was, was the startups. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I really felt like that was the right thing for me, right. absolutely. Let's get into like CoFundMe. Absolutely. Um, explain us the a little bit, really. a little bit about like what is it all about? CoFundMe basically is the biggest matching platform for entrepreneurs in Switzerland. Uh, we have around 8,000 members, 2,000 startups and growing. The idea is, like I mentioned before, it's about the democratization of startups. Everyone can join the startup ecosystem here in Switzerland. So basically the way it works is whether, you know, if you're a founder, you know, and you're looking for someone with a particular set of skills, you know, you'll find them on CoFundMe. You have the best people there. You know, we have people from the ETH, from the University of St. Gallen, from the UPFL, UHL, HUC, you know, and from all over Switzerland with really talented, with a lot of skills, you know, that can contribute to build strong startups. And in the other side, if you're a co-founder, meaning many, you're someone that you know, doesn't have an idea, but you, know, you have a strong set of skills that could be useful to a startup, well, you'll find the best startups there is in the Swiss startup ecosystem here on CoFundMe. So that's the way it is. We match entrepreneurs at all levels. Tell us, like, maybe you have one example where you can say, like, well, thanks to this match that you did, there was like some kind of like Absolutely. A successful startup coming out from here. Um, one of the coolest things, and actually that's on our landing page, you know, it's the Pauli Sevinch, uh, you know, founder of Doodle, used us actually multiple times for, not, not directly Doodle, but actually from most of the ventures, and he still recommends us by this, to this day to use our platform because it's the best place to find, you know, talented people with, that are entrepreneurially driven. Right. So that's a good successful story for us. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, whenever uh, you build like a marketplace, so as we learned in school, there is supply and demand and you have to Absolutely. build one of them. Which one, in your case, what was harder to build and how did you solve the problem? Um, well, first of all, I think we at CoFami don't really talk about marketplace. Uh, it's an ecosystem. Basically, what we did is that we're trying to reach out to all stakeholders, you know, within the Swiss startup ecosystem and trying to get them on our platform. I think the hardest part for us was to kind of outgrow this uh, regionally bound thing that we have since we were based, uh, initially we were initiative between the University of St. Gallen and the ETH. And it was kind of hard for us to kind of outgrow that and go, for example, to Romandie, the French part of Switzerland. And that is how now, you know, go cross, you know, uh, language barriers and stuff like that, two cultural barriers. And now that's something we're doing and we're reaching out to entrepreneurs also over there. I guess that was the tricky part. It was to get, you know, entrepreneurs from different, you know, cultural areas, you know, and, and get them on a platform mm -hmm. and on board. Mm -hmm. So where, where do you see, like now you have this huge database of like um, startups, entrepreneurs, 
um, I guess also investors maybe a little bit. Absolutely. What, what, what's your plan for this with the future? Oh, we have lots of plans. Yeah. Uh, some are hidden. No, absolutely not. You know, it's pretty straightforward. One thing for sure is that, you know, we're going to stay that open platform, you know. It's about transparency, so you'll ever know, you know, what's going on. If you want to find out about someone, you know, it's going to stay that way. One of the cool things we're working on right now is that we're, for example, created a new uh, chapter feature. So we're selecting exclusive, for example, accelerator or incubator partners to work with. So they get a special page for their startups and they get the opportunity to actually uh, be featured. And this gives more visibility, more credibility to their startups and gives them uh, higher or easier access to prime talents. So that's one of the cool things we're doing. So, you know, getting a chance to really cool working startups to get to find the best talent. Mm -hmm. And one of the cool things as well is that we're growing out of Switzerland now. We're looking at a really cool now next event is the Entrepreneurship Avenue in Wien. And that's, we have a really cool partnership. We're going to be the main matching platform over there. And that's one of the cool things, you know, we want to do. We want to help now entrepreneurs, you know, from different countries to match and create, you know, startups. So that's one of the cool things we're working on. On the backend side, uh, we're very proud to actually now we've recently hired a, a new deep learning, a machine learning guy. Yep. And uh, one of the cool things we're working on is to identify, you know, potentially successful startups and kind of be able, you know, to push them, you know, within our system. So that's why... One of the cool things we always recommend people is to really, you know, you should have a, pro, a complete profile because it is noticed and, you know, there's a lot of things, you know, a lot of opportunities on CoFundMe. Right, for sure. That's, they also tell us that our, uh, you know, career in corporate services here in the university. Most definitely. Make sure you have a full profile. Tell me, like, I think, I think as, as one who sees a little bit behind the scene of, of this big database, you probably can tell us a little bit about, let's say, the ecosystem and the startup system in Switzerland. Yeah. Um, we, we made it on the World Economic Forum Index. We're always number one in innovation. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what do you see? Where, where are we heading in terms of industries? Uh, absolutely. Where are the most startups founded in which industry? What's going to be hot in the next mm -hmm. five to ten years? We see a lot of successful startup in the fintech area, in the medtech area, and I think it also comes from the fact that we have really awesome uh, universities such as the ETH, the UPFL. However, one thing that we've seen that is a bit lacking is business model innovative startups. And in the sense that, you know, a lot of startups that here are quite successful are the ones that, you know, just are pushed by a professor within one of those two universities. And then as soon as they're out, kind of are bought back in a big company. And I think this is, of course, we have, it's highly technological, highly competitive uh, little companies, but they actually are not the ones that, you know, that stay around and actually really build into a real big companies like you would have in the UK or I would say in the United States. But then again, maybe you, you'll think <laughs> something otherwise, but that's, that's something we've been getting. And I believe, you know, that's something maybe we could do more. And uh, I, I think it's because the way our economy works, I would believe it's still kind of conservative. There's not a lot of place for uh, disruption yet, but I think that's something that's changing. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to be at the Swiss Startup Day last semester, and it was Johann schneider Amann who himself said, there's still too much regulations, and you know, we're working on that to make it more easy for startups to you know, open new businesses, yeah. to grow into real big companies. That's something we really look forward, especially for CoFundMe, where, you know, where you know, we have great talents that finally you know, can fight stable, long-lasting jobs or you know, companies. Right. So, 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 so to wrap up the show and this yeah, episode, sure. maybe you can give one or two industries that you say like they're going to be really hot in the next uh, couple of years. Really hot? Um, Just one or two industries you can mention. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a tricky one. Um, well, like I said, you know, fintech and medtech right now are pretty big, uh, especially like, uh, well, medtech is something we've seen, especially now coming from Le PFL. Yep. Uh, a lot of things are going on over there. Uh, they're investing heavily. That's something we're, we're definitely looking at. Uh, we are ourselves at CoFundMe. Cool. Paolo, thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you, Cedric. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you to all of you who were watching this episode, who tuned in. Thank you for your attention. And I'll see you very soon with a new episode. Have a great day.